<clears throat> okay, all I'm doing here is uh, framing the openings for my air intakes because I've got the openings on the other end framed for my fans. All right, again, <clears throat> fulcrum, lever. All right, so I want to start on this end, putting the panels on. And so what we have here is this angle. And see, I want to run my trim this way. And then there'll be a piece here that follows the slope all the way to the peak. And so what we have then is making this angle work right here. Because if you can see the angle here, and see if they don't uh, see the difference there, how much longer that the length of the cut is. And see, the problem is if these angles are not the same, of course, I've exaggerated this just to show you, but if the angles are not the same, then they won't match. So the trick, or the dilemma, is how to get those angles on both pieces the same so that the length of the cut is the same and so they match. And so that's what we're going to do. So we'll go back to the carport. <clears throat> All right, so I've got up in the trailer here to try to get some shelter out of the wind outside. I've got a real healthy breeze blowing this morning and all the rain that we had uh, yesterday morning and the night before, uh, everything here is soaked and the temperature's dropped and it's cold. So it's cold, damp, and the wind's blowing. So it <laughs> feels like it's like 20 degrees here. Uh, but anyway, it, it's cold, just cuts right through me. I go down and work just for a few minutes and my fingers are literally so numb I can't feel them. So I have to go in and sit by the fire for a while and warm up. Anyway, so as we were looking down there on the building, and I was showing you that the trim, the single H channel is going to come up the wall to where it meets the truss. And then we've got the angle, see? So we're going to, to demonstrate this. I'm going to, we'll let this piece of cardboard represent the wall. And if we remember the little technique about drawing the straight line, I'm going to draw a line on here. Okay, so <clears throat> we'll let that line uh, represent the wall. And, of course, we know the slope is a 412, right? Okay, so when you take these nice these squares that have all the nice measurements and, and dimensions and everything on them, but anyway, we can, we can come here, and because the line that I just made is parallel with this edge, and I'll show you why I did that in just a minute. So then we can uh, we can come over here to the common scale, common rafter, and the four, it's a 412. And so we line that up on that edge right there, and, and the heel of it, the pivot, is touching the line there. So we get that just right, and then we make a mark here. If you can see that or not, I'll try to get it in the lens. Okay, so this represents the slope of the truss, the 412, okay? This is the wall, this is the slope, all right? So there we have the angle that we need. Now, what we need to do is we need to bisect that angle so that the angle on both pieces is exactly the same, and that way they match perfectly, okay? So what we do is we get a compass, not the one for telling direction, north, east, south, and west. Uh, we get a compass uh, to draw an arc, and not 
a big boat type of arc, a arc, a Noah's ark, but rather a arc, a r c, circle like Job, who sat upon the circle of the earth. <coughs> and you open it up fairly wide. The wider you can open it, the more accurate this is. But oh yeah, I know it's awful. So and, and try to get this where you can see what I'm doing. We get right where this line meets, right here. Okay. And we make an arc here and here. Of course, this is easier if I'm doing this laying down flat, but I'm trying to turn it up where you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so there's the pivot. So we make an arc there. We make an arc there. Where these lines cross, then if we open our compass up even wider, it needs to be a little wider, so I just open it up all the way. Alright, and then we make our pivot where these uh, crossed. So we go right there, and then we go out in here and make an arc. Okay, and probably, I don't know if you can see that or not, uh, pencil's kind of light. But then we do the same thing again right over here. And again, this is basic geometry. We'll make another arc. See that? And where these two arcs cross, right there, we draw a line through the, from this original pivot through that line right there. See, now <clears throat> this angle, again, this was the wall, this was the slope of the truss. And so what we've done, we have bisected that angle, and this is, and that's perfectly bisected, this is very accurate to do it this way. This is the way that I always uh, bisect angles. Uh, again, we, we know the, the uh, slope is a 412, but sometimes you get into an angle uh, that you don't know what it is and you have to determine what it is like uh, when I done the uh, stair project for uh, Peter and Stacy Dodgen. Uh, the winding stairway and uh, every one of the treads was different so you had all kinds of angles to work with and so I had to take each individual angle and this is the way that I did it uh, for the trim pieces uh, and so forth to uh, make these miters and to make the, the trim fit. And so then what I do is I take, uh, yeah, right here. I take a T-bevel and see we line that up on that angle. And so then this is how I do it. And then I take this angle and then I transfer that to the miter saw. Okay, so I tried to darken these lines up a little bit to where you could see. Um, so again, uh, this represented the wall, and then this line represented the truss, the slope of the roof here. And so I took a compass and made an arc here and swung around and made an arc here, okay, on the wall and on the slope of the truss, and then spread the compass wider and went from the, where these crossed, okay. Made an arc from over here, made an arc, and then you draw a line through like that, and that's how you bisect an angle. And then we just, as I showed you, I used the T-bevel to transfer this angle over to the miter saw. And so as I said, then we take the angle that we have just taken off of our drawing and we transfer that to the miter saw. You just move the blade around to where it's against the fence and you line that up so we have the correct angle. 
cut a sample. Okay, now I have to cut the opposite angle, and all I have to do is note the degree, which that's 35 and a half, and then just move it over to this side. Okay, the reason I put that on a block is because if I die on a little short piece, it wants to go under the fence like that. So let's go try this out and see how this fits. Okay, now what I've done here, I went ahead and installed the piece of single edge trim up the corner and then also up the slope all the way to the peak and cut the first sheet. And <clears throat> I didn't take, didn't want to waste your time, you know, doing that, showing you that again. Same technique uh, with the, uh, uh, the cutoff guide, uh, it's just on a slope. And so, um, four foot wide, it's a four, four inch slope. 412 pitch then you come over four foot you go up 16 inches so that's uh, nothing uh, complicated there of course I had to rip the sheet down a little bit on the width for the first sheet to start off now what I've done as you can see of course I haven't uh, I've just I've installed it temporarily and here where this air intake is going to be I'm going to cut this out and the reason that I haven't peeled the film and everything off of it is because I want to cut that out then I'll lay the sheet down and blow all the dust out of the, the channels in it. And then I'll put the tape on either end and then mount it in place. So if you can see right up there, I drilled a hole. Hopefully you can see that hole there. That is so that I can put the router bit through. Which is this, which this is a solid carbide spiral down cutting bit and it has a guide bearings on it. And so I'm gonna put that in there and, and anytime you cut on the inside, you wanna go clockwise. So, um, and the reason I want to start at the top is because I'll finish at the top and that way the piece that I cut out will fall away from the bit instead of stopping on the bottom and it landing on the bit and making a mess. So that's what we're going to do.
cups for supper.
know what I had to do here. Spring these two openings in an inch and a half because of where the panel breaks. Uh, you know, it couldn't, can't go in behind here and try to cut this out and then mount a lever on that. So the easy thing was just spring that in an inch and a half. Go a little deeper to get up over this loom trim. That'll finish up this end. So uh, the other end will be a little more tedious. We've got a door to try to trim around both with the aluminum as well as hanging the trim for the storm door. <laughs>